Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to our in-depth Erebus Spotlight tutorial series. So today we're going to talk about one of my favorite things in the Erebus. That is bug taming. Um, bug taming is just, it's really, really cool, really, really unique, and there's actually a lot of things that you can do with it uh, that isn't true of normal mob taming. Um, the Erebus is like one of a kind when it comes to that. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is beetles. Um, there are five different beetles that spawn within the Erebus. That is regular beetles, bombardier beetles, stag beetles, rhinoceros beetles, and titan beetles. Now, bombardier beetles, just avoid these things. They're nasty, they're mean, and very, very hateful. Um, if we pop into survival mode, I smack that one. You can see it attacks me and causes kind of like an explosion. Uh, sound effect it does do a pretty decent amount of damage and it doesn't really blow up any blocks or anything like that but they are quite nasty creatures there's not really anything you can do with bombardier beetles but they do drop blaze powder so there is that uh, but they can't be bred they can't be tamed and I think technically you can heal them but I probably wouldn't do that if I was you uh, now moving on we have the standard beetle now this beetle it cannot be tamed if you use a beetle amulet on it it will still consume the beetle amulet and that is one thing um, just as a heads up if we pop into survival mode you can see that I can use just beetle amulets like crazy um, make sure that you don't do that you only need one of these to tame a creature and they're a little bit expensive because they do require altar fragments so I wouldn't suggest that you uh, spam those because it will just consume them so just a heads up on that uh, and these beetles you don't need to tame them and there's a variety of different colors as you can see uh, that they can come in so just a heads up you'll see a decent little variety of them they all look kind of similar and if you want to you can tame them with turnips beetles love turnips so if we breed a couple of these up Yeah. There we go. Turn up to make them turn up. And you can see it has spawned a beetle larva. Now you're going to get uh, different beetle larva depending on uh, the types of beetles that you breed. So this is just a standard beetle larva. You can see sometimes it takes a few, a few, a few tries to get them to breed. But uh, we are going to get these little beetle larvas. So if you look at their face that's what's most important when it comes to breeding beetles that's going to tell you what kind of a beetle that you have and after a while this beetle will become an adult and you'll have a new beetle and if you want to you can farm these guys you can kill them and keep them for exoskeleton plates uh, so they can be farmed for that um, in addition you can milk beetles um, pretty much any kind of beetle you can go up and you can just right click it um, it doesn't work on beetle larva um, but I believe it works on most any kind of beetle um, and you're going to get beetle juice buckets and this is basically the Erebus's version of milk and it will be used for making some smoothies and stuff later on which we'll talk a little bit more about that later on uh, but just know that's where you get beetle juice and you can drink it um, as, a, as an alternative to milk um, while you're in the Erebus or you know if you don't have access to normal milk you can drink it in any dimension not just the Erebus but um, moving on, that's just your standard beetle. That's really all that you can do with it, is breed them and keep them and farm them for exoskeleton plates. The stag beetle, we'll start with this one. If you come across a stag beetle, I absolutely love the way that these look. They're probably the most beautiful pet that you can have, I think. Um, if we go into survival mode, you will notice that they are aggressive. So just be aware whenever you approach a beetle, um, a lot of them are aggressive on site. But if you have a beetle amulet, and you right click him you can see that his health just jumped up from 60 to 80 and he is now a tamed beetle and he can now be bred you have to tame them to breed them but uh, he can now be bred using turnips and just know sometimes it will take a couple tries um, for them to actually want to breed it'll take a few turnips there we go and you'll notice that this one's face is just a little bit different it's kind of got these like little uh, tusks sticking out of it. Look at them all following me. They're like turnips. We love turnips. Uh, you can see these little tusks sticking out of 
um, his face there. And the nice thing about stag beetles and the other beetles that we have to cover is we can actually equip them with a beetle riding kit, um, which is another craftable item. And we can saddle up and take off riding on our stag beetle. And they work pretty much like horses. The only exception is they cannot jump. Beetles cannot jump, uh, but they will step up one block high, um, little areas and stuff like that. Um, but you can ride around on this guy and he can move at a pretty decent speed. Not to mention you will look absolutely cool riding around on your stag beetle. <laughs> so moving on, and also worth noting is stag beetles, um, I know at least in tails, they are super useful to actually just farm them, breed them up and farm them, because it won't always drop, but you'll, you'll still get the exoskeleton plates, but you can also get heart of the stag. Um, heals 10 hearts when consumed, it's always edible, and in addition it can be cooked to fill the hunger bar when consumed, always edible. And the roasted heart of stag, oh well, I'm thinking of tails. In tails I use it for the titan stew, but uh, by default that's it. <laughs> you just cook it. Um, so they can be farmed for those hearts, they're not 100% drop, sometimes they can be kind of rare, uh, but looting will help your chances as far as getting those, and they are, by default, healing 10 hearts and being always edible, super powerful. Um, especially if you have something that allows you to eat instantly um, it becomes extremely extremely useful so um, now moving on we have the titan beetle this guy right here you can see kind of antennas on him and we can breed them uh, but you need to time them first so let's go ahead and just time them there we go and you'll hear that sound effect that means you can time them or you know that they're they're eating they're consuming the turnip if they're not timed they're not going to consume the turnip and in a minute once they get done locking their mandibles together we are going to get a baby titan beetle there we go there's our baby titan beetle and you can see he's kind of got like these little antennas that come up out of his head and that means that that beetle larva is a titan beetle. So just bear in mind that these do have kind of a visual difference. And these titan beetles can also be ridden with a beetle riding kit. You can hop on board, ride these guys around. They move at a pretty decent speed. Once again, beetles can't jump, but they can climb up one block high um, inclines. And in addition, the titan beetle has another really nice feature in that it can hold a chest. So if we want to apply a chest to this, we can just right click the chest onto him. And now we have a chest on the back of our beetle, which can be accessed. I think shift right click, yeah, shift right click the Titan beetle. It's been a little while. Shift right click the Titan beetle. Once it has the chest on it, you can't be riding it to access it, um, but it will open up the chest. And it just looks really, really cool. I imagine like uh, some kind of like desert town that uses these for like caravans you know and has the the chest beetles and they like have their traveling merchants with like titan beetles riding around now in addition uh, you can attach an ender chest as well to this and you will be able to access the ender chest and access your ender network while having it be portable on your titan beetle as well so another kind of nifty feature of it uh, you can use those now the last beetle we have to talk about is the rhinoceros beetle. These guys are right here. Um, once again, these can be tamed with a beetle amulet, and they can be bred using turnips. Just remember, sometimes it does take a few tries um, to actually get them to breed, and sometimes they will kind of push up against each other like they're trying to breed, but they won't actually breed, but in this case they did. Um, so I do suggest having a little turnip farm. And you'll notice this one kind of has the little rhinoceros beetle horn sticking up right there. That's how you're going to know that one. And once again, these can be ridden around. And you'll look pretty spiffy on your rhinoceros beetle riding around. And you'll notice that they are excessively fast in comparison to the other ones, to the other beetles. And another really neat feature, you're going to notice a bar down there right above uh, my inventory. That is our speed bar. That tells you how fast you're going. Controls, let me check it, because I think it's inner, It's doing uh, beetle ram attack. Yeah, it's it's messing with the inventory sort, so I'm gonna set it to just the I button. So now if we pick up speed and we hit the ram button, we can actually ram creatures, dealing pretty significant damage with this thing. 
with our rhinoceros beetle. Just know you have to press it right as you kind of come in contact with the creature. But what's cool is you can like spam it into them. Um, so you can kind of use these guys for battle in that way. Um, just know that based on your speed, that's how much damage you're going to deal. Um, it's you know it's gonna it's gonna change based on um, how fast you're moving and stuff uh, with this beetle. And in addition, what's really nice is you can, if you run into spaces, you can climb up walls and things with this beetle. Um, other beetles, of course, can't do that, but you can do that with the rhinoceros beetle. But he's kind of like your super travel beetle. Um, of course, I don't recall being able to put chests on these, though. I don't think so. No. Um, that is unique only to the um, the Titan Beetle. So, just remember that. Keep that in mind. Um, but if you want a really fast mount to get around the Erebus, because unfortunately, dragonflies are not tameable, at least at the moment. They would make the coolest flying mount ever, um, but currently not tameable. So just a heads up, or like a grasshopper or something, that would be awesome. Um, and praying mantises, that's like my dream. Praying mantises, grasshoppers, and dragonflies being tameable would be amazing. Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh, you'll notice he's taking damage. Some of these creatures will um, cause some like fire damage to your beetle. Uh, so just bear that in mind. Okay, I'm having too much fun. Let's move on to the next bug. Okay, so bees, you're going to find these guys in this area. This is the Elysian Fields. They're exclusive to the Elysian Fields because this is where all the flowers spawn. This is where pretty much all your pollination bugs, all your pollinators, are generally going to be spawning around the Elysian Fields for the most part. Um, and bees are exclusive to this area. Now, whenever you come across a worker bee, this is what you're looking for, and you're going to notice that they tend to... Um, kind of congregate around flowers. That's where you're going to most likely find them um, is around these and generally around the stigma of the flower um, because, of course, they're pollinating the flowers, right? So what we can do is we can craft up a honeycomb, um, which does require that you get some nectar. And um, the way that you're going to get nectar initially, you'll notice that as the bee pollinates, you're going to see some, um, some nectar on his legs, right? Because basically he's getting that nectar to take back to his hive. And so what you can do is you can get yourself a nectar collector. This right here. And you can just, once you catch up to the bay, you can just right click him and make him drop his nectar. Um, and that's how you're going to get your initial nectar. Now you can also kill the bee to get it. But I wouldn't suggest doing that because that's just horrible uh, to do that. So um, you'll see that he will build back up on nectar very, very quick. You can actually just sit here and farm it from him because he's got four more on his legs already. He's just going to a new a new flower. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make a bee taming amulet. It's right here, just nectar and jade. Um, and you're going to want to get yourself a honeycomb, um, which does require that you get papyrus. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but then chest and nectar, um, all pretty straightforward though. And then what you're going to do is you're going to set up yourself a honeycomb. Okay. And you're going to take your bee taming amulet. It says right here, click on the honeycomb block to set it as the target for the bee drops. Then click on the bee to tame it. So what you're going to do is you're just going to right click that. And then you're going to come up to your bee. Sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to chase these down. But then you're just going to right click your bee. And this bee is now going to be tamed. It's going to take him a second. He's going to kind of search and see, okay, I've got the hive. Let me show you something. If we go into survival mode, if you break the stigma of a flower, you're going to get back uh, seeds based on the type of flower that it was. And you can also get the petals and stuff like that. Um, and then what you can do is get yourself some bone meal. I've got compost, same thing. You can take and you can plant these down. And then you can grow it into giant flowers. Um, and it's going to, generally you're going to get back the type of seed for the flower that it is, but there is a small chance that you will get a rainbow flower as well, um, or rainbow flower seeds instead. Uh, so just a heads up on that. Uh, you can get those also. There we go. Now I think they're working. I, I went ahead and put down some new bees. Um, probably tame as many as you can get because it seems like they are wanting to take breaks on occasion. Um, but I also moved the the honeycomb 
And it seems like they're behaving a little bit better. They're heading back to it. They're just not, they haven't gotten any uh, nectar just yet, I don't think, to drop off. Yeah, there we go. So they've gotten six nectar and they're continuing working. So it may have been where I had the honeycomb placed. It may have been probably plant your flowers first, get your field set up, and then put your honeycomb and then tame your bees. Might have more luck that way. Um, it can be a little bit finicky. But uh, really it's not too bad. And then they're going to be collecting that nectar um, and bringing it back. And we're going to talk about a little bit more about what to do with that nectar um, in an upcoming episode. I just wanted to show you how to get the nectar. But these two are working extremely well. So, like, extremely well. Yeah. So, sometimes if it's being a little bit finicky, just, you know, try to get you, you some new bees. I suggest taming as many as possible. And, like I said, it could be just because I, I had the flowers placed after those. And But it looks like, yeah, that one's now waking up and working. So, anyways, that's really all there is to bees. They're pretty straightforward. Um, like I said, if it's being finicky, just get yourself some new ones and you should have no issues after... You know, it may take a few tries getting a few bees, but some of them are just lazy and they don't want to work. Also, um, I forgot to mention, whenever you break a stigma, there's a chance you're going to get more than one seed, like two seeds, basically. There's a chance you're going to get two. Um, so you can farm them up that way just by planting your flower, bone mill it, break the stigma, get your seed, replant, bone mill it, break the stigma, get your seeds. And, uh, you know, eventually you're going to have a little stockpile of... Um, of seeds so it might be worth it if you want like a bunch of flowers maybe for decor you can easily you know farm up one of each color and then you'll have them so uh, definitely worthwhile to do that I think from a building perspective if you're just doing bees just one flower um, as long as they're recognizing it will be fine for you okay now the last thing we need to talk about is ants um, there are two different types of ants that you can tame. There's actually a variety of other types like uh, zombie ants and uh, fire ants. But we're basically looking at the ones that you can tame. Um, and that is the honeypot ant and the black ant. And let's go ahead and uh, spawn us up a couple of these honeypot ants. And the way these work is if you take sugar, you're going to notice they take a little bit of an interest. This one's following me. That one's following me. Um, what you can do is you can uh, feed them sugar, but first you have to tame them using an ant taming kit or an ant taming amulet. I'm sorry. Um, you'll notice it doesn't consume the amulet. And once you tame them, what you can do is you can feed them sugar up to eight sugar. And you're going to notice that uh, they get a little bit bigger. <laughs> and then what you can do is you can just right click uh, with your uh, nectar collector and you're going to get um, eight nectar. And you can just rinse and repeat as much as you want. There's really no cooldown. Um, so, I mean, realistically, you could have just one honeypot ant and farm up nectar that way. But you are going to have to have sugar uh, to input into this. Whereas bees just collect it uh, for free. But they are a little bit more work uh, than, you know, just getting a single honeypot ant. And that's pretty much all there is to honeypot ants. They're pretty straightforward. And also worth noting, um, the honeypot ants, you're going to find those in the ulterior outback um, biomes. So, just a heads up there. Okay, now the last thing we need to talk about are black ants. Black ants are a lot of fun because they are masters of farming. So what we're going to do, we're going to put down um, a silo, which requires three things. You're going to need silo supports, you're going to need a silo tank, and you're going to need a silo roof. And once you get that place down, if you right click it, you're going to notice you have a very large inventory and it tells you your silo location, your XYZ coordinates. Um, and then what we can do is we can shift right click an ant taming amulet on it and it's going to save the settings for that silo location. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up the basic stuff that we're going to need for a farm. So let's go ahead and just put some water around this like there. Um, yeah, that should be fine for us. And then we're going to put down some lights as well. Um, and you could just attach these here if you want. I'm going to do it just for simplicity, but you can make it a little bit fancier. Uh, of course, and then we're going to get ourselves a black ant. Now what you're going to do is you're just going to take the ant medallion that's linked to a certain silo and just right click. And it's going to give that ant a random name. So we have Chantel the ant. Now if we right click the ant, you're going to see an ant command control um, tab open up here. 
And what we can do is we can put a tool into the left slot. We're going to start off with the hoe, and I'll show you that. And whenever we apply, oops, come back. And then we're going to put a seed into dot. And you're going to see that Chantel gets a little outfit. This is your um, your basic like your farm setup ant outfit. And if we put some seeds into the silo, Chantel's going to grab them. You're going to notice they go into this right slot. That is the ants, uh, kind of the ants inventory. And so Chantel's going to begin planting uh, the seeds that we gave her and start building us out a farm of wheat. And then of course you can do the same thing with potatoes or whatever. Um, I'm not going to say it handles every modded um, crop. It may or may not, you know, you just have to test it. I think most of most of the uh, crops that use the just, you know, the standard seed logic will probably work. Um, but don't quote me on that. And she's gonna build out basically an eight by eight farm. She's gonna come out, um, oh, this one, oh, there's no light out here. Let me just put put some additional light sources around this. Go crazy with it. You got to make sure you got your water and your uh, uh, light around this, because it is still going to require basic seed um, stuff, right? And she's going to keep planting this out. She's going to come out probably four blocks in this direction. It'll be three in this direction, uh, three in this direction, and probably four in that direction. I'm going to say. And she's going to make, like I said, about an 8 by 8 farm um, spot of land. And she's going to manage it. So if anything ever happens, um, she should fix it. But, like, if something gets trampled, um, if she does not... Oh, no, it's a uh, 9 by 8. Um, she doesn't get this little end over here. But, anyways, so she has built a farm for us. Now, what we can do is we can set up, say, another silo... Um, technically, you could use the same silo. Um, yeah, let's just use the same silo, for example, but you could set up different silos for different professions. Um, so if you're auto-feeding things, materials into a silo, um, you could either manage how many items are being auto-fed into the silo, or you could set up a separate silo that handles, um, that holds, say, seeds, and one that holds, say, wheat, and, you know, like the finished products, and one that holds, say, bone meal. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll use the same silo, and then we're going to get ourselves a bone and some bone meal. And you can use the uh, Airbus compost as well. Um, so, for example, we'll use that. But uh, what we're going to do, once again, place down our ant. We have Dylan the ant. And we're going to give him the bone and the, uh, well, no, I want, I want compost in this case. And so Dylan the ant, you can see he has a little bit different of an outfit. Uh, kind of this little, this is his bone miller outfit. And he's going to go around and start applying the compost that we gave him to speed up crops. Now, I do suggest uh, one thing that can help you out is get yourself some lily pads. Um, it's just going to help your ants out as far as navigation. They're not going to be as likely to get stuck because they'll walk right over that. But Dylan's going to start bone milling our crops around here for us. Just kind of in a random, um, he's going to generally go out from the center and kind of work his way around. Um, applying a bone meal to each crop as he goes around. So just remember bone, and then if you're using bone meal, put bone meal here. If you're using compost, put compost here. Um, other modded bone meal type things may work, but I'm not going to speak to uh, how effective those may be. So, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to want an ant to actually collect the items when they're harvested. So what we're going to do, we're going to make another ant here. It's going to be tied to the same silo. So we have ant one, and we're going to give it a bucket in the tool slot, and we're going to tell it what kind of uh, thing it needs to be collecting, and that's going to be, yeah, let's put wheat in there, um, I believe. Yeah, you can see he just grabbed that wheat, um, but you'll notice that he's not going to collect seeds. So if you're doing um, a farm, I do suggest you have two collector ants, unless it's something like potatoes, because of course we have another Dylan Dylan the ant. Throw this down. Here he comes. He's going to get it. There we go. And he's basically like a vacuum collector, right? And you can see that he's going to dump the stuff into the silo. And something I've never actually tried before, and I am kind of curious, if we apply... There's Dave. And what if we told him that he was collecting, like, redstone? Does this work? <laughs> can we use him as just a vacuum collector? I'm thinking that... Uh, 
There goes Dave. Yep. So these ants can just be used as a vacuum collector. You can only filter one item on them, but they can be used as basically a vacuum collector for you. Um, so that is a thing. <laughs> That's interesting and actually extremely useful. Really, really cool little vacuum collector system. And I mean, you could have multiple ants feeding in the same silo, you know, just set different ones for different filters. Um, and they're not too, you know, they're not too difficult to uh, get or anything like that. But the last ant that we need to talk about. So what we're going to do, this one, since it's not actually using the silo at all for anything really, um, you're not going to need anything in this slot. You're just going to put shears in this slot. And you're going to see that he's going to start going around and collecting um, the any fully grown crops that he can find. He's going to collect those. And you can see the collector ants follow in behind him. And they're going to pick up the items. And once they get a full stack of those items, then they're going to take them over to the silo and dump them off. Um, and you can see that the farmer ant now comes in behind those ants and just replants everything. It is retilling, but it's not a big deal because, once again, it doesn't take any durability or any kind of input item for it to teal. It's just going to manage the stuff, take care of it, and you don't have to worry about it. So we now have an automated farm that's handled by ants, right? And you can see there's a grown one. He's going to come over here. You can see in his mouth he has, like, sheer mandibles. Um, really, really cool. And um, probably one of my favorite types of automatic farms because it's just a lot more unique than uh, I think most most systems. You will notice sometimes they'll kind of wander off a little ways. They won't go too far from their silo, but they will kind of explore. So make sure you do give them kind of a safe space um, around there or fence them in. That works just as well. Uh, so you can do that. And if you don't want your pesky collectors collecting things, you know, from elsewhere that you may not want them to collect, um, you can kind of inhibit them in that way. Oh, you know what? don't put grass underneath your silo because I just noticed why she's acting up and she's wasting seeds right now she's trying to plant seeds onto the grass that's there so don't put grass there put something like a stone block or something underneath your silo um, and they won't do that but but mine are mine are trying to uh, plant on that and of course there's a silo placed on there so they can't they can't harvest that so if you don't want them to um, try to teal and plant on a spot just put stone or something that can't be tealed and planted on um, and they won't do that so just a heads up she's really trying to work on that grass spot and that's why she's kind of wasting her time and not doing her job but bear in mind that one harvester can harvest multiple farms in that area so if you have um, you know a silo here and we had another silo here and 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 here um, all those collector ants could manage um, all those different farms and the one harvest ant could manage that entire farm. If it's fast enough, if you don't have a lot of crop speed stuff, he can manage the whole thing. And then you just have the planter ants and a silo here with that planter ant, um, you know, managing that one silo and then have your collectors maybe drop off at a different silo or something like that, or just have one silo that does handle your inputs as well. Um, and then your collectors and your harvester will be really busy. But yeah, so that is how black ants work and how you can automatically um, farm within the Erebus. A little bit more interesting, I think, than most auto farms and a lot of fun. Um, there are still, you know, there are some small kinks with some of this. So like I said, if ants ever get stuck, um, depending if it's distance or something like that, maybe give them a shove. Otherwise, take their tool out and replace it and then they'll be like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be doing this. Sometimes they can act up, um, but in my experience, generally they're not too bad. Just don't let them wander too far. I think that's the biggest, the biggest concern with them. But anyways, that pretty much covers it for animal taming and uses. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy the episode. Um, one of my more favorite features within the Erebus. Um, just kind of a unique batch of systems that uh, no other mod really offers, I don't think, um, in the way that it handles things and does things, which I love. I absolutely love so next episode we'll probably cover the kind of the, the rest of the farming stuff like what do you do with nectar um, and different seeds and things like that that are present within the Erebus and some kind of a couple of kind of unique farming mechanics within the Erebus then if we have time we'll cover uh, making smoothies 
anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys then.